This is the lecture for Chapter 10 of the 8th edition of the book, Teaching Self-Care Skills. So, some general teaching considerations. Um, so first, identify what to teach. Second, have team input and consensus, as well as criteria for selecting self-care skills. So, what are the characteristics of target skills and self-care that you want to pursue? Um, target skills should be functional to the student and valued by the team, suited to the teaching setting as well, appropriate for the student's chronological age, peer standards, and culture, and then also possible to acquire in one year. So, eating and mealtime, which is an important self-care skill, um, well, how do we identify what to teach? Uh, well, first there's the prerequisites for um, eating independently. So, active gag reflex, skills of sucking, maintaining closed lips, swallowing, biting, and chewing, and then as well as proper positioning. Also, a family interview would be helpful, so you could just uh, discuss and learn about family routines, food preferences, allergies, dietary restrictions, and any, time, any kind of existing mealtime skills and then identify which skills to prioritize. The sequence for meal time, teaching mealtime skills would be first eating finger foods, drinking from a cup or glass, then using utensils, then spreading and cutting with a knife. So that would be the basic sequence. So addressing problem behaviors in, in, in eating, so namely food selectivity and refusal. So antecedent strategies rely on changing the environment, foods, or prompt procedures. And then uh, reinforcement, reinforcement procedures would involve uh, providing reinforcement for new food choices. So consumption of non-preferred foods is followed by access to preferred foods. Um, there are also multi-component treatment packages that address both antecedent and consequence procedures. Rapid eating. Um, pacing props may be used to slow down or speed up the student's rate of eating. Assistive technology may also be useful in providing those pacing props. Uh, selecting, you know, for selecting and addressing skills to teach, um, you can have a preference assessment. Preference assessment would also be smart in the eating and in, in the eating skills, especially when you talk about food selectivity and refusal. Um, family participation, and then all, as well as the baseline assessment of what are the current skills. So you have observ observational learning or modeling, so students learn by watching other students perform competently or by watching others being taught. Video modeling, students can watch brief videos um, of performing a target skill. So self-management, students can prompt and monitor their own performance. There's also social stories or social narratives, which I really question the validity of, but um, and I guess in some instances they, they can be helpful. Uh, so students read or listen to a short story that describes relevant aspects of a challenging situation, how that individual competently or um, competently overcomes them or handles them. There's also simultaneous pop prompting where students are cued to look at materials given a task request and prompting for each task, step of the task, and then of course chaining, all kinds of chaining. So forward chaining, total task chaining are often used uh, to teach um, dressing and grooming skills. So in review, teaching self-care, teaching uh, self-care, care, sorry I can't speak today, self-care skills involves the, these three processes you know, identifying, oh, identifying what to teach. I shouldn't say identifying, sorry, for the planning. But planning, yeah, planning what to teach, I guess that's part of identifying. Um, can't plan unless you identify first. But anyway, uh, planning how to teach and then evaluating learning. Um, team consist consensus is very important in selecting target skills and teaching strategies. And the family should be part of that team as well. You know, a parent should be part of um, that consensus. Uh, finally, target skills should be functional, age-appropriate, and consistent with age and peer norms, and possible to acquire in one year. 
So that's an overview, a summary of Chapter 10 and teaching self-care skills. On to the next chapter.